OK, like I say, I do data. And in fact, I love data. And what I love most about my job is trying to find those little nuggets of useful information in the huge quantities of noisy data that my clients generally have. I like to think of it as rummaging around in some lovely, healthy soil and pulling out a big, juicy worm. <laughs> You'll appreciate this while you're eating, I'm sure. <laughs> but my clients don't like the analogy so much, so I tend to talk in terms of profit. If I can use data analysis to make their sales grow by 10% or make their processes 20% more efficient, that translates to the bottom line, which then justifies my fee. The value, the profit from that data, isn't just the fat, wriggly worm, though. It's also how quickly you can get it to the customer. So latency matters. For instance, if you're selling worms to a hungry pigeon, and if you know where the really good worms are and you run down to the muddy field, dig the hole, pull out the big, juicy worm and run back, you'll have lost sales if one of your competitors can produce mediocre worms, good enough worms, every two minutes. You'll get back and you'll see this big, fat pigeon staggering away, and you'll make no profit. So data can be... Oh, yes, I have this nice slide. <laughs> I found that on the internet. The internet's a weird place, isn't it? <laughs> Yeah, so data is valuable in two dimensions. The first dimension is the obvious one, the precision, the usefulness, the accuracy. But the second is also the timeliness of the data. To satisfy your client, you have to satisfy them on both dimensions. And some clients, of course, are more demanding than others. So I'm guessing everyone knows HTML5 by now. It's yeah. nicely established. It's just a set of API extensions to HTML4 we've been using the past 10 years. And they tend to be orthogonal. You can pick and choose which ones you want. SSE is one of the lesser known APIs. And in common with WebSockets, it's interesting because it involves both the front end and the back end. It's about the communication between them. WebSockets is a much more complicated protocol and allows two-way data passing. SSE is dead easy. Um, because it's stripped down. It's all about getting data from the server to the client. And it's a text-based protocol. So it's actually very easy to troubleshoot and debug. If we have time, I'll just show you that briefly later. What's it stand for? Server sent events. And it's slightly confusing because the JavaScript API is event source, not SSE. <laughs> Protocol and class name are different. Okay. Emily, I will need your help soon. Thank you. I want to talk about the difference between data push and data pull and polling. So the, the oldest and most normal way, most normal, most ubiquitous way to, for your user to get fresh data is for them to press reload on the browser. That's the way they get the latest version of your website, the latest version of the data you're publishing. It's not great. Then, a few years back, Ajax was developed. Ajax allows us to do a query to get just the data that's changed. So instead of requesting another 50K HTML page, we request just the few bytes of data we need. It gets rounded up to a packet, but that's maybe one packet instead of 50 packets. That's still data pull, though. We either do it in reaction to the user pressing a button, saying, give me the latest data, and that's no different from them pressing reload, or on a timer, which would be polling. Every 30 seconds, we call the server and say, is there any new data? And we'll be comparing that with data push now with the help of Emily. So. Even though Emily and I only just met this morning, we're already in love. <laughs> and she's going to be writing me some love letters. Sounds like Emily. <laughs> <laughs> I hadn't heard that. No, me either. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what it's like when you're in love, that passion. 
you want those letters as soon as they're written. In other words, in love, latency matters. So we're going to start off... It's text messages these days, isn't it? Pardon? It's text messages these days. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Zero latency, yes. We're doing it the old-fashioned way. So I'm going to start off showing you rapid polling. So Emily is the server. She's producing the data. And I'm the client requesting the data. So we start. Is it ready yet? No. 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 It's almost like she's being distracted. Is it ready yet? Ah, thank you. <laughs> oh, feel the same way. So. Um, the latency was quite low. Almost as soon as she'd finished, I got the letter. But I'm sure you noticed the problems. I'm out of breath, and I kept distracting her. So in web terms, I'm making a lot of connections that are wasted. And it's wasted on both the client and the server side. <sighs> so now we'll show you long polling, where I'm just going to poll less frequently. So we start. Uh, so I'm going to take my time. I'm going to get on with other work. Have a sip of tea. Check my email. I'm still in love. I still want to see the message. but I'm being disciplined. Hmm. And another cup of tea. Please <laughs> cool. <laughs> yep. Check one more email. Ah, there goes my 30-second timer. <laughs> Is it ready yet? Ah, thank you. You can't have it back. I want it forever. <laughs> you can have this one back. I prefer that one. <laughs> but, and you saw the, the pros and cons of that approach. I didn't waste any resources at all. I didn't make any requests that didn't get data. But there was that nasty 10-second latency which if you work in, say, the finance industry, is huge. So the third one we'll look at is data push, which is the model that SSE is using. So if we start, whenever you're ready. written in the stars. <laughs> okay, there there was zero latency. That was even better than our rapid polling. The downsides, um, they're not as bad as the short polling downsides. I didn't keep having to make that connection. The client was not doing anything at all. There was no CPU usage on the client while we waited for data. The downside is I'm holding open a socket. If Emily was cheating on me and writing love letters to 20 other men at the same time. I'm standing in her doorway. None of those other men can get in to get those messages. <laughs> good for me, not good. So good for her. So when you're using SSE, you're holding a socket open. You're running a process in memory on the server constantly, ready to send that data. So those are the downsides. You don't scale so well. So you need to balance your need for latency against your need for scaling. Okay, thank you. No quick moves on the internet. Presumably you can have multiple sockets open on the server and you can go round robin when you're ready, can't you? You can get ready like that. It's not even round robin. Each process is a dedicated process. Okay. Oh, okay. Um, when you run it with Apache and PHP, yeah. Apache will open a new PHP process for each client. Okay. So you're going to start hitting memory issues at about 100 connected clients per server. Oh, okay. um, if you did it in Node, you've got a single process, but each one is going to be a thread, okay. which is almost the same thing. And then um, you start scaling horizontally when you get to 100, presumably? Yes. Yeah. You'll put some kind of load balancer in there. You can scale out. And you mentioned finance. So when I worked in finance, we didn't do any sort of web because the latency was just too, yeah, yes. too much. 
So with, with SSE, is the latency uh, small enough still to be able to, to you know, sort of be able to trade some other stuff through a web client? Yes. Um, it's a socket for, for FX applications. Everyone is sending it data over sockets anyway around the world. So is it just like having a, um, a thick client, but it's instead of a traditional thick client, it's the web browser? Is that as simple as that? Ah, yes. You're talking FX? Yeah. Yes, I guess so. Yeah, mm. Right, I'll show you some code now. I'd normally build this up, but I'm just going to show you the, the finished thing. Um, let's start with the front end. Can you read that okay? Yeah. So we've got some scaffolding. I've got a tag where I'm just going to put the data. I've chosen a pre so we can see the carriage returns. I initialize it to connecting. This line does all the magic. This is the name of the HTML5 API, and that creates the object, does the connection, and starts receiving the data all asynchronously. The only parameter, I pause there. There is another parameter, see the book, you don't normally need to use it. The only parameter is the URL you want to connect to to get the data from. My PHP script and my HTML file are in the same directory on the same server, which is recommended. You can put them on different servers, but if you know your Ajax, you'll then hit cause issues, which are a hard work to work around. So when you can, keep your HTML and your PHP or your data producer on the same server. And then, this is how you collect the data. You add an event listener to the event source object, listening for the message, give it a function, and the third parameter is always false. Again, if you're nerdy, there is no event bubbling concept with SSE, because there's no user interface. What's the name of the event? Does that have to match what's on the server side? Message is the name of the event, which is the default. Okay. You can specify others. So if you change it on the client, you change it on the server as well, they have to match up? They have to match. I'd recommend you always use message okay. and don't bother with the event part of the protocol. And your function is given E, and inside E is the data. And you can see I'm just going to append it. And it looks like this. Now, when I tested this last night, I realized I'm running PHP in Japanese time zone for some reason. <laughs> so that is correct. You're getting the time in Japan. <laughs> Just wanted to show you that it is nice, simple text protocol. This is running the PHP script from the command line. And I'm jumping ahead of myself. Let me show you the protocol next, the back end. This is all there is to send the data. It's nice and simple because it's a text protocol. You spit out the data on standard out. Set a mime type. SSE defined its own mime type. That can be annoying at times. The theory was it would allow um, a proxy to recognize that this is data that shouldn't be cached. I'm setting, I don't know how well you know your PHP, this just means never time out the script, it's going to run forever. And then I'm creating an infinite loop. This should make you nervous normally. <laughs> it doesn't matter here, you want the program to run forever. And as soon as the socket is closed, the process will disappear, Apache will kill it for you. You can exit from the server side in a finance application I might shut down on a Friday evening when I know I'm not going to send any more data for 48 hours. But normally it's the client that ends the connection. The user closes their browser, the socket disappears, Apache closes the process. And then the protocol, this is my data packet, just the date stamp, is five bytes of prefix, data colon, and two line feeds. And the last thing we need is 
to flush the data. This is just the PHP idiom for send the data straight away. PHP has its own internal buffering, and then Apache has its own buffer too. Apache will normally not send the message until you finish, which we just went to all this trouble to get no latency. We don't want that. Buffering is an optimization against latency. And that's it. And that's the raw output of the program. So it's very easy to test without the browser getting in the way. You can also connect over curl. And again, you can see you're just getting the same data. Without the browser? What do you mean? So that's the, that's the client code you showed, it's just there. Yes. Directly to pop PHP in the browser, does that, what does that show you? Ah. Um. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Don't do that. I, I need to set up an HD access, don't I? You can use developer tools, that's what I thought you meant, and what you will see is this keeps getting longer and longer forever, so your page never finishes loading. Yes. Okay, this is a more interesting example using D3. Here we have the server sending back new data, random number, every 200 milliseconds to 1,000 milliseconds. And I'm just charting it in D3 and shuffling the points along. Okay. This is the back-end script. Um, I wanted to develop interesting random numbers. That's what most of it is. I'm making an array of data and then JSON encoding it. So when you want to send more complex data, this is the best way to do it. And I'd recommend putting a type field in here rather than using SSE's own event header because it gives you more flexibility. The event header is sometimes difficult to get, whereas by using JSON data, you can always do your own handling and processing of data. Plus, presumably, if you did change from SSE to something else and you put the JSON forward, That's then still have the front end stuff which would handle it, you wouldn't have to change it. Exactly. Um, <coughs> browser support is fairly good now, everything except Internet Explorer. Yeah. So, Internet Explorer, you have to go back to the old fashioned methods of polling or the comet techniques. Yeah. Um, a good chunk of the book is dedicated to showing how to use the techniques so they work in any browser transparently. Cool. So, are you still not supporting it? So they haven't committed even for the latest browser, <laughs> which is very frustrating. So are there client-side libraries you can use, which so you just use it if you'd expect it does the right thing? I had trouble getting them to work, which was actually where my study of SSE started. Right. I couldn't get the, um, yeah, I couldn't get the libraries to work reliably across all the devices I wanted, including mobile. So I just wrote my own. <laughs> I realized I had to get down and understand the protocol itself, which isn't that difficult. Just one thing I wanted to show here, when you receive the message, when you're receiving JSON, you just do JSON pass, and then I'm printing out the V member. So again, very easy to use. Just go back to my slides. Yeah, didn't really go into D3 today. <laughs> so, uh, just to finish my self-introduction, the company was created to find um, world-class experts in their own domain and find clients with really difficult problems and put the two together and hopefully solve their problems and make the world a better place. <laughs> Which is kind of what I was doing freelance, but I wanted to scale up and tackle the bigger problems that I wasn't able to. These are some of the areas we work in. 
natural language processing, sentiment analysis, and uh, analyzing news documents. Uh, we work in Asian languages. I, I lived in Japan for 20 years, only came back to the UK last year. Um, we also do non-Asian languages as well, even English. <laughs> um, financial trend prediction is um, the, the main business, I guess, because it's easy to find financial clients who understand the value of improving their data analysis by 1%. And that's at all scales from like house prices or inflation down to FX ticks. And new technologies. So we're investigating WebGL at the moment as a way of presenting data in more useful ways. So that, that demo is hopefully going to turn into the VR headset. And then a trader can turn their head to see multiple screens, look at an object, and they'll zoom in automatically instead of having an array of monitors on the wall. That's where we're hoping to go with that one. Um, the data feeds, this is something that's been in a very long private beta, will become public at some point. This is, we've got some very clever people have written data mining algorithms, and they're const we constantly monitor the data source say it's an FX price feed, dollar yen, and predict in real time which way it's going to go and feed that data to our clients who can then hopefully make better decisions based on that data. And SSE is one of the methods we use for streaming that data to clients. It's, it's a nice protocol because it's very low overhead. Yep, and that's it. So that's information on the book. Um, I have some little things here that have a discount coupon, so 40 to 50% off if you're not lucky enough to win one of the books. And source code from the book is on GitHub, and that's my email address, dc at qtrend.com. Okay, any questions? I did have, did have one. When we were talking about the um, <clears throat> example, when Emily was sat there and you, were, you said, when you're ready... Um, presumably, that, so that socket remains open. Yes. But presumably, you could have still been drinking a cup of tea at the same time. I realised. Yes, that, I, realized I, was, that I was both the client and the socket. Yeah. Yes. So you could have, yeah. So although the socket would be open, you would have been able to do other tasks while you were waiting while that socket. Was exactly. Open. Yes. So there was no CPU usage on the client at all. Yeah. yeah. There's no while loop. There's no polling. Yeah. Are there any examples where you'd say it's definitely not a good idea to use it? Are there any use cases that people might go, oh, that's a good idea, but in your experience you think, mm. don't? Um, if, if your server is bandwidth limited or resource limited, more than latency matters, then you shouldn't use this. Then you should use the slow polling, yeah. poll every minute, every five minutes, whatever, to the point where you're not overloading your server. Yeah, once you use SSE, you will have that socket open. The only way around it is to kick the user off, <clears throat> but then the way SSE works is if you're kicked off, it auto-reconnects for you every five seconds. <laughs> so that, that won't work. Yeah, you need to commit to latency mattering before you offer SSE. Um, <clears throat> A good example would be Facebook. When you use Facebook, it pops up in the bottom left. Someone's just left a comment on your page or someone's just liked your post. And that's coming through very quickly. That's ideal usage for SSE because the alternative would be to poll every second. And Facebook's business model is built around wanting people to interact as soon as possible. So for Facebook, that latency of the interaction matters and they'd be better off using SSE. I don't know if they do or not. Do you think from a kind of a security point of view of people trying to like deny the service or take down a server by overloading it, is it really easy for them to do it with SSE than normal? Is it, is it easier for them uh -huh. to utilise the resource in a server too much to take it down? Or? They could quickly hit your maximum connection limit, yes. But... When you do denial of service against a web server, don't you leave the socket open anyway? Isn't that how you do the denial? Is it, does, it, does this make it even easier? 
I don't know. I don't think it matters. I think you leave the socket open when you're denying service. But yeah, I, I don't know. I haven't tried. <laughs> <laughs> Any more questions? Okay, thank you.